just us. I brought the Inquisitor. I'm Alistair. It's an honor to meet you, Inquisitor, though I wish it were some place a bit nicer. I assume Corypheus gained control of the Templars by corrupting the Lyrium they were already taking. To do the same to a Seeker, you'd have to force the Lyrium upon him. We didn't just think Corypheus was dead. He was dead. No pulse, no breath, full of stab wounds. There wasn't a lot of room for doubt. I tracked that Venatory mage back to Adamant Fortress. They're looking at assault options now in the war room. Thanks for coming. You did well, Varric. The Inquisitor is just who we need. Ah, oh, it's, it's been great. Murderous wardens, archdemon attacks, plenty of blood mages and crazy Templars. Just like home. I know how much you hated Libuka. This is the ass end of Thetis. You know they eat snails here? Still, I, I think I, uh, I need to finish this out. If it weren't for me and Bartrand, none of this would have happened. So much for changing our lives. And that's what happens when you try to change things. Things change. You can't always control how. I tracked the Wardens to Adamant Fortress Inquisitor. Your specialists have my full report. Oh, I... What's going on here? It seems the revered mother is concerned about my undue influence over you. It is just concern. Your worship, you must know how this looks. You might need to spell it out, my dear. This man is of Tevinto. His presence at your side. The rumors alone. What's wrong with him being from Tevinto, specifically? I'm fully aware that not everyone from the Imperium is the same. How kind of you to notice. Yet still, you bow to the opinion of the masses. The opinion of the masses is based on centuries of evidence. What would you have me tell them? The truth? The truth is I do not know you, and neither do they. Thus, these rumors will continue. Oh? I'd like to hear what these rumors are, exactly. I... could not repeat them, Your Worship. Repeat them? So you've shared them before? I... see. I meant no disrespect, Inquisitor. Only to ask after this man's intentions. If you feel he is without ulterior motive, then I humbly beg forgiveness of you both. Well, that's something. She didn't get to you, did she? No. It takes more to get to me than thinly veiled accusations. You don't think she'll do anything? Do what? Yours is the good opinion I care about, not hers. It does make me wonder. Is my influence over you undue? Perhaps. But it's the kind of undue influence I enjoy. No one accused you of being politically astute. <laughs> Not today. <laughs> I tease you too much, I know. It's helpful when you turn that scathing wit on people other than me. I'll have to find something we can do that doesn't involve teasing. Soon, ideally. Herr Oswin, odd that the trail should lead us here. Ban Loren is a pious, unassuming man. What has he become involved in? He might simply be a victim as well. Let's see what lies within.
promise. I should have known. The Order of Fiery Promise is a cult with strange beliefs about the Seekers. They've hounded us for centuries. Cultists? Why am I not surprised? This explains why the Seekers might be here, but not the connection to Corypheus. Torture him to death. The promises will pay for this. As the Seekers of Truth have proven resistant to the effects of Red Lyrium, the Elder One has seen fit to place them in your care. Reclaim your destiny, and know that the Elder One expects your devotion as repayment. Signed by Lord Samson, Commander of the Red Templars. Does Corypheus not realize the promises want the world to end? What use are they to him? Corypheus will probably betray them before they get their chance. But after he gets what he needs out of them. But this doesn't explain how he captured the Seekers in the first place, or what's been done with them. We must keep looking. The letter said Seekers were resistant to Red Lyrium. Our abilities grant us many gifts, but the resistance to Red Lyrium's corruption? That seems strange. Although it would explain why none have numbered among the Red Templars. And thus Seekers would be useless to Corypheus. He would have no leash to hold us. We'll find them, Cassandra. I know we will. One way or another.
Daniel! Daniel! Can you hear me? Cassandra... It... is you. You're alive. As are you. I'm so glad I found you. No, they put a, a demon inside me. It's tearing me up. What? You can't be possessed. That's impossible. I'm not possessed. They fed me things. I can feel it growing. The promises will pay for what they've done. No. The Lord Seeker. Of course we'll find him. If he lives, we'll... Lucius betrayed us, Cassandra. He sent us here, one by one. An important mission, he said. Lies. He was here with them all along. He's still working with them. But we met Lord Seeker Lucius in Val Royale. He couldn't have been here. That wasn't him. It was a demon. Masquerading. What? How could that be? The Lord Seeker allowed it. He let the demon take command while he... Came here. Cassandra. Now is not the time for sympathy. Wait. Don't leave me like this, please. You should have come with me. You didn't believe in the war any more than I did. You know me. I wanted that promotion. <coughs> Go to the Maker's side, Daniel. You will be welcome. He was my apprentice. I have never known a finer young man. Now we find Lord Seeker Lucius. Lord Seeker Lucius. Cassandra, with a man I can only assume is the new Inquisitor. And you're the man who betrayed his own order. I presume you know we Seekers of Truth were once the original Inquisition. Oh yes, we fought to restore order in a time of madness long ago, as you do now. And we became proud. We sought to remake the world. To make it better. But what did we create? The Chantry. The Circles of Magi. A war that will see no end. You lured your entire order to their deaths. There was no other choice. No other choice? Have you gone mad? 
We Seekers are abominations, Cassandra. We created a decaying world and fought to preserve it even as it crumbled. We had to be stopped. You don't believe me? See for yourself. The secrets of our order passed to me after the former Lord Seeker was slain. The war with the mages had already begun, but it was not too late for me to do the right thing. He's completely mad, isn't he? Lord Seeker, what you've done... I know. What Corypheus did with the Templars does not matter. I have seen the future. I have created a new order to replace the old. The world will end so we can start anew. A pure beginning. Join us, Cassandra. It is the Maker's will. insane. He had to be. The influence of Corypheus, perhaps? Was he trying to disable the Seekers? All these wasted lives. He could not have destroyed all of us. I won't accept it. Let us return to Skyhold. I wish to see what's in this Book of Secrets. Perfect space for knocking sense into each other. And training. <sighs> this tome has passed from Lord Seeker to Lord Seeker since the time of the Old Inquisition. And now it falls to me. That's a lot of not very exciting reading, apparently. I assume you know about the Rite of Tranquility, the last resort used on mages in the Circle, leaving them unable to cast, but depriving them of dreams and all emotion. It should only be used on those who cannot control their abilities, but that has not always been the case. You mutilate mages. I always thought it a necessary evil. What finally began the Mage Rebellion was the discovery the right of tranquility could be reversed. The Lord Seeker at the time covered it up. Harshly. There were deaths. It was dangerous knowledge. The shock of its discovery in addition to what happened in Kirkwall. But it appears we've always known how to reverse the right. From the beginning. doesn't surprise me at all. We created the right of tranquility. To become a seeker, I spent months in a vigil, emptying myself of all emotion. I was made tranquil and didn't even know. Then the vigil summoned the spirit of faith to touch my mind. That broke tranquility and gave me my abilities. 
The Seekers did not share that secret. Not with me, not with the Chantry. Not even with... There's more. Lucius was not wrong about the Order. I thought to rebuild the Seekers once victory was ours. Now I'm not certain it deserves to be rebuilt. Rebuild the Seekers. Make them better than they were. Thank you. I could not have done this on my own. You'll be quick, will you? I'm a runner. They may be running. Oh. Uh, I see. I'm pleased to hear it. Let's How's it going? I'd like to know more about your work with the Ben Hasrath. Ben Hasrath is actually a general term. You've got the secret police who investigate problems inside our territory. You've got the re-educators who take people with problems and fix their minds. Or make them disappear. And then you've got the spies. How did the re-educators work? Well, I only know the basics. Wasn't my area. That said, keep a man awake long enough, ask the right questions, give the right potions, and you can get him to say anything. You don't need blood magic or demons to change someone's mind. We're a lot more fragile than we'd like to believe. And you're a spy? Close. I am now, I suppose. But that's not how I started. They sent me to Saharan because they needed someone who could fight and hunt down problems. That whole island was a sack of cats. Incursions from Tevinta, Talvashath, and native rebels fighting both sides. And in the middle, me, trying to wrangle the rebels and restore order. You seem like the type who enjoys a good fight. There's a good fight? And there's finding out who put rat poison in the bread and killed a bunch of children. I hunted down a lot of rebels. Lost a lot of friends to the Vince, or the Fog Warriors, or the Talvashoth. One day I woke up and couldn't think of a damned reason to keep doing my job. Turned myself into the re-educators. Obviously you made it out alive. I wasn't sure I would, but I honestly didn't care at that point. I just couldn't keep fighting that fight. The Ben Hasrath ordered me to go to Orlais, ostensibly as a Talvashar, and work undercover. That's how I ended up here. That's a... damn. You did ask. Anyway, nice talking with you. Attacking wardens now. That's pissing great. Is your network of contacts still active after what happened? After Lord Arsol and Vichel? Of course. He may have killed people, but that just means there's more who hate him. It's crap that he killed people, though. They were just trying to stand up a little. We'll talk another time. 
It's all good, isn't it? Hello. Yes, hello. I am your trainer. Yes. I am your trainer. You said that. Good, because it has been a long journey. The cause is just, and if we don't start soon, you won't have time to learn. <clears throat> I am your trainer. You seem a little scattered. It's nothing. I'm just a little fatigued. It's nothing. Thank you. I was charged with studying the breach and the subsequent rifts to discover how they affected traditional disciplines. I was enthralled. So were the 19 others, I presume. They're dead. They learnt the power, but couldn't wield it. Rift Mage Inquisitor, the forces are incredible. And with training, you will be incredible. I know how not to die, and I can teach it. It's incredible. The rifts were triggered by the breach. There's already a school of magic. A school? No. Yes. Sort of. The holes in the veil flooded us with magic, and that can be used. It changed some rules, modified them, enough that the careless inverted themselves, old forces and new forms. Others will try, their results will vary, but you will have the best instruction. Because your trainer has already taken the risk. The price has been paid. You didn't mention your name. I am your trainer. That isn't a name. It is what I am. I try very hard to remember that much. There is so much else to keep in mind. Understand, Inquisitor, that I have learnt it all very quickly, so you do not have to. No, I can't commit yet. Hold and declare, Inquisitor. What do you mean? I ask your intent. I was summoned to oversee training, and I would know my charge. I am your commander in this matter. Commander Helene. Thank you for coming, Commander Helene. Commander will suffice, recruit. I teach the skills of the Knight Enchanter. It is a rank. It is a life. Understanding its hierarchy is the first step. You already know this. You were not made Inquisitor and then taught to lead. I will teach you how to rise to your place. How to join your warriors, spectral blade in hand. How to command the ranks while standing beside them. Are you ready? I can't commit to this yet. Inquisitor, I heard a tapping. My skills are required. And you are? Speaker Vius Anaxas. I have come from Navarra as a voice for the dead. Welcome them, and they will serve your cause. The Inquisition is open to any allies. Warmth I do not often find. Thank you. I am of the Mortalitasi. We tend to those who have passed and revere their lives by honoring them in death. And when the living are threatened, we give the bodies of the dead physical purpose once more. Necromancy, Inquisitor. The dead will serve for you. What is a mortalitasi? We are the caretakers of the Grand Necropolis of Navarra. For the treasured relative, we usher a spirit of the Fade into the void of their mortal form. It honors them both. But when enemies threaten the living, we turn death into a weapon of war, instead of merely the result. You're a mage who manipulates life. How is this not blood magic? Blood magic consumes life. It tears at the living to manipulate and destroy. It is a cancer among our kind. We honor life by venerating the dead. We give their mortal form purpose in combat. Perhaps only for a few moments, but that is still more than they had. More than opposing you normally allows. 
I'm ready to learn what you know. Then your journey begins as others end. The steps are small, but vital. There is instruction and veneration. Then you'll return. We shall see what this life holds for you. Here, I'll sum it up. Corsa, please don't call me that. I've read your tale of the champion, and I have a few questions. That's a pretty common reaction. Go ahead. There is no way Hawk really could have killed the Arishok. It would have started a war with the Kunari. I was told later that the Kunari disavowed his actions. Apparently, the Arishok didn't get permission before he attacked Kirkwall, and the Kuhn didn't want another exalted march. When they finally sent a ship to haul the Red Dreadnought away, they just said, We will never speak of this again. As far as I can tell, that's the Kuhn's version of an apology. Carry on. We must stop the Wardens from carrying out this insane plan, Inquisitor! to seek out these old gods deliberately in some bizarre attempt to preempt the Blight. And calling the army of demons, that's my favorite part. The demons are nothing. They're a tool. A tool that gives Corypheus an army. That's not the point. Even if they could succeed, the entire idea is wrong. The Blight is not something one smugly outsmarts. Forgive me. The entire idea is... unnerving. Very interested in my opinions. I need to talk to you. About how much you adore me, I assume? I hear that so often. Let's do something interesting. More interesting than wandering the countryside killing random strangers? Perish the thought. Sad we aren't in Minrathus. I could show you a hundred ways to shame your ancestors. But we'll make do. Close all you like. I have this one. Are you sassing me, Commander? I didn't know you had it in you. Why do I even... Inquisitor. Leaving, are you? Does this mean I win? Are you two playing nice? 
I'm always nice. You need to come to terms with my inevitable victory. You'll feel much better. Really? Because I just won, and <laughs> I feel fine. Don't get smug. There will be no living with you. I should return to my duties as well. Unless you would care for a game. Prepare the board, Commander. As a child, I played this with my sister. She would get this stuck-up grin whenever she won, which was all the time. My brother and I practiced together for weeks. Oh, the look on her face the day I finally won. Between serving the Templars and the Inquisition, I haven't seen them in years. I wonder if she still plays. You have siblings. Two sisters and a brother. Where are they now? They moved to South Reach after the Blight. I do not write to them as often as I should. Ah, oh, it's my turn. You're about to relive those childhood defeats. This game is mine. This may be the longest we've gone without discussing the Inquisition, or related matters. To be honest, I appreciate the distraction. We've been through enough to drop the formalities and simply talk. I suppose we have. Well, I believe the game is mine. Wait, what? Dorian cheats at this as well. Mayor Gregory Dedrick of Crestwood is present for betraying his own constituents. He confesses that, ten years ago, he flooded old Crestwood to kill refugees and villagers touched by the blight. The mayor claims it was to spare the rest of Crestwood, but we only have his word. He's pleading guilty while claiming he's not. Which is it? There's no cure for the blight. But I couldn't convince anyone to leave a sick child or husband behind. So you herded the infected into one place and flooded old Crestwood? Were no innocents caught in the waters? Nearly everyone in the village had the blight. I swear it. Have mercy. I couldn't tell the survivors I'd drowned their own families to save them. I, I, I couldn't. You committed murder on Ferelden soil. Let them deal with your punishment. Send him to Denerim. He can live the rest of his life behind their bars. In prison? Maker. I should have drowned with them. Do you know where this noble wanted to meet us? I do. 
The Comte Boisvert has invited us to his mansion, not far from here. I pray he clears up the deaths of my messengers, as promised. Lead the way. Welcome, my friend. Thank you for seeing us, Comte Boisvert. The honor is mine. Please, sit. It's an honor to assist two such distinguished guests. I hope helping us doesn't endanger you. Hardly. Even a brush with someone as well known as yourself can become a great asset in Valroyo. Giving you the identity of those who murdered Lady Montilly's messengers seemed the least I could do. Have you heard of the House of Repose? The Assassin's League? My contacts obtained a copy of a document in the archives. Contract for a life. The House of Repose is hereby sworn to eliminate anyone attempting to overturn the Montelier's trading exile in Orlais. Who's sending these assassins? The contract was signed by a noble family. The Du Paraquettes. But the Du Paraquettes died out as a noble line over 60 years ago. Indeed. But the contract was signed 109 years ago. How can a family try to kill you after they died out? The Du Paraquettes were our rivals. They drove the Montelliers from Val Royale. This contract was drawn up over a hundred years ago, but it wasn't invoked until I tried to overturn my family's exile. Unpleasant though it may be, the House of Repose is merely fulfilling its contractual duties. If the people who wanted your family dead are gone, why are the assassins still after you? A contract is a contract, Inquisitor. Orlesian businesses live and die by their reputations. The entire guild's welfare would be endangered if an agreement was tossed aside on a whim of time or fate. She's quite right, Your Worship. The House of Repose is doing what it feels necessary. By its standards. I assume you have a thought or two on this, Josephine. The Du Paraquettes still have descendants under the common branch. If we elevate them to nobility, a Du Paraquette could annul the contract on my life. Uh, that will take time, Lady Montelier. Time during which the House of Repose will be obliged to haunt you. Will they now? You are exceedingly well informed. You're not to have said you'd heard rumors at best. A bit of subterfuge. This contract on your life is an ugly business. One the House of Repose deeply regrets. But this is Orle. Even an assassin's word is his bond. Does Comte Boisvert actually exist? Absolutely. The Comte's offer to reveal the killers of Lady Montilly's messengers was genuine. So was his information somehow. A nun to be tied up later. The House of Repose has some nerve sending a killer to greet us. Hardly anyone in the League isn't trained for this, Inquisitor. The contract on Lady Montilly's life is so unusual, we felt the courtesy of an explanation was in order. It is appreciated, Monsieur. Your idea to seek out the Paraquet to revoke our orders is uh, an interesting one. I wish you luck. I did not come to shed blood today, Inquisitor. Only to speak. Might I pass? Why warn us about your contract and let us go? In Orlais, it is only decent to inform those involved in a contract when extraordinary circumstances conspire. And the Guild's reputation would suffer if you ignored the contract. I quite understand. Thank you, my lady. May we conclude with my departure? Go, then. Good day, Your Worship. My lady, I pray we we'll never meet again. Well, I didn't think our meeting would end like this. 
We'll deal with these assassins. I have some thoughts. Let's discuss them back at Skyhold. I'll feel safer with the castle's walls around me. Do you hear something? Mm. Oh, goodness. Uh, Comte Poivre, is that you? Mm. Oh, the lock's been broken off. We'll find a saw. Mm. I realize the cabinet is quite valuable, Comte, but surely... Mm. A locksmith, then? Mm. Mm. As you wish. I'm so sorry, Inquisitor. I never thought my family's trading status would trap us in an assassin's plot. Between our soldiers and spies, Sky holds safer than anywhere else in Thedas. Yet the problem persists. I've tracked down the last two paraquets. If they become gentry, they can annul the contract on my life. We'll require a noble from Val Royaux to sponsor them, a judge to provide documents, a minister to ratify them. It's so like you to take the longest course of action, even when your life is at stake. I assume you already know everything about this mess. There is a faster way, Josephine. The original contract on your life is in the vaults of the House of Repose. If my agents infiltrate it and destroy the original, the assassin will have no obligation to chase you. Liliana, please. I want no more bloodshed over a personal affair. Don't be so stubborn, Josie. How long will it take you to gather these favors in Val Royaux? Give me some time to think this over. I'll post a watch on our ambassador in case the House of Repose visits. I appreciate it, but I still believe elevating the Duparakets will solve this. First, we need to perform some favors in Barwayo. I'd be happy to discuss where we could begin. We cannot neglect our soldiers' training. Can we neglect roads? Our allies cannot take the same route through the mountains we did. It helps.
The recipe is complete. The ceremony ended. You know our way. Now you must choose to accept this role. To shepherd and to condemn. I am ready to commit to this. To train in necromancy. Then you honor me as well. You have begun a path that goes well beyond where others must stop. You will find, Inquisitor, that life is not so final as some might think. Welcome to our way. Good book? Ah! Oh, I don't know what you're talking about. No? What are you hiding exactly? I'm not hiding anything. Exactly. I think you are. It's of no interest to you, I'm certain. It's a book. I can see that. It's one of Varric's tales. Swords and Shields, the latest chapter. The latest chapter? Meaning you've read them all? Not since this all began. We've been busy. That's just her favorite. Nobody asked you, Tavinta. <laughs> I couldn't finish the last one you lent me. I actually feel dumber for having tried. It's literature. Smutty literature. Whatever you do, don't tell Varric. Why not? I think Varric would be pleased to have another fan. Pleased? Yes, that's one word for it. They're terrible. And magnificent. And this one ends in a cliffhanger. I know Varric is working on the next. He must be. Pretend you don't know this about me. Inquisitor. something Cassandra is waiting for the next issue of Swords and Shields. I must have heard that wrong. It sounded like you just said that Cassandra read my books. That's exactly what I just said. Maybe I'm just going crazy. Wait, did you say the romance serial? Oh, she'll be waiting for a while then. I haven't finished it and wasn't planning to. That book is easily the worst I've ever written. The last issue barely sold enough to pay for the ink. Well, Cassandra seems to be hooked on it. And I honestly thought a hole in the sky was the weirdest thing that could happen. So, you want me to finish writing the latest issue of my worst serial? For Cassandra. Oh, that's such a terrible idea. I have to do it. On one condition. I get to be there when you give her the book. You've got a deal. I'll get to work then. You know, the fact that the book is terrible just makes it more worthwhile somehow. What have you done now? I get it, Seeker. You're still sore after our spat. I'm not a child, Varric. Do not suggest I'm without reason. Uh, a peace offering. The next chapter of Swords and Shields. I hear you're a fan. 
This is your doing. Oh, yes. Do you really think I'd miss this? Well, if you're not interested, you're not interested. Still needs editing anyhow. Wait! <laughs> you're probably wondering what happens to the night captain after the last chapter. Nothing should happen to her. She was falsely accused. Well, it turns out the guardsman... Don't tell me! <clears throat> this is the part where you thank the Inquisitor. I don't normally give sneak peeks, after all. I... thank you. Barrack's the one you should be thanking. I am but a humble servant to my loyal readers. I wonder if I have time to read the first part. But don't forget to tell all your friends, if you have any. Ah, oh, completely worth it. This is just... it's something to keep their hands busy. I'm grateful you tracked me down when you did. As exciting as wandering the woodlands was, this is better. It's good to be part of something so important. Something that could change things. I'm pleased that you feel that way. Makes me sound like a Chantry sister, doesn't it? Some giddy new initiate. But so be it. I suppose you've earned my loyalty and girlish enthusiasm. You are who you choose to follow. Someone told me that once. Took me years to understand what he meant. There's wisdom in that. It was a chevalier who said those words to me. A powerful man, but never without honor. A true knight. We met as competitors in the Grand Tourney. He left me with that advice before we parted. Put aside his own ambitions to help me win the melee. I don't think I even thanked him. What is this Grand Tourney? You've never heard of it. The Grand Tourney of the Free Marches. It's a spectacle. Song, dance, wine, every amusement you can imagine. <laughs> but the greatest part is the contest of arms. Prove yourself in the Grand Tourney. And you can make your fortune. How did he help you? There were a hundred men on the field, each one fighting for himself. The knight and I had forged an alliance. It was just the two of us, and we took all comers. The goal? Down as many opponents as possible. He always let me deliver the final blow. He must have wanted something from you to help like that. A pupil, a squire. Someone to teach and to mold. He saw my potential. When it was over, he offered to mentor me. To teach me to become a chevalier like him. And I, young and stupid, turned him down flat. I just won the melee at the Grand Tourney. I didn't need him. I should have gone with him. Perhaps things could have been different. You're here now, a Grey Warden. It worked out. I suppose it did, didn't it? But I'm older, hopefully wiser, and I think I've chosen the right person to walk with. <laughs> 